Welcome to Time Warner Cable Channel 16's High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Mark Heffernan. This is Bobby Sharp. And tonight, the 28th meeting between the Garces High Rams and the BHS Drillers. And it's going to be a good one. This is only one of many great games we're going to have on Time Warner Cable every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, Mark. And it's just a great feeling. It's a great feeling here, and we're excited to be here. Bobby, the last time Garces won the series was 1991, and BHS has won the last four in blowout fashion. Yeah, but last year's game was not as as uh, far apart as most people would think. There were a couple of possessions that could have changed that game, so it's going to be real interesting to see how Garces does tonight. A key kickoff return last year was a touchdown by James Wofford, which cut a 14-3 lead to 14-10. BHS was back to the game. They really came out smoking in the second half. Yeah, with two minutes left in the half, Wofford returns the kick, puts the game at 14-10, and Garces had all the momentum all the momentum at that point in the game and really we're out playing the drillers and I think that play right there is what got BHS back into the game. This series started in 1969 and Garces won three of the first four games in the series and as we look at the matchup tonight Garces returned basically their entire backfield from last year. Drew Johns the quarterback, Clint Tobias and uh, Brian Mulhoffer in the backfield but Garces has a young inexperienced line. But you're going to see one of the top quarterbacks in all the valley. Drew Johns is, is, is a legitimate division one prospect. I saw him play many times last year. He's outstanding. He can throw the ball, and, and when they run the wing tee and mix in the pass, Garces is very dangerous, but but can they stop the drillers on the ground? That's going to be the key tonight. Well, the drillers have an awesome offensive line, and also they're big defensively. Running backs, uh, Bennett and Dumas, they may have a couple of guys alternating at quarterback, but their key is their line play and their speed around the outside. Well, Hammonds and Lewis will alternate at the quarterback position, and I'm not sure they're sure who they're going to really count on yet. They're still looking at it. But it's going to be it's going to be Garces' ability to stop the Bakersfield high run. The 100th year of football in BHS history and number 50 in Garces. And tonight's game will begin next on Time Warner Cable Channel 16, the prep football game of the week. G E T. The get buses arrived for me from there to here and here to there. G E T goes everywhere. What can you do for cleaner air? Ride to work with time to spare. Yeah, you ain't seen nothing yet. Here's what we say. Get on the get on the get bus, get bus, get on, get on the get, get on the get bus, get bus, get on, get on the get, get on the get bus, get bus, get on. Coffee in the morning gets you on your way with something cold any time of the day. Sounds real good, but what do you say? It's easy, it's fast, we're on your way. Take a fast trip to the fast trip. Something to go and something to sip at the fast trip. Take a fast trip today and pick up an ice cold super guzzler or regular guzzler only at fast trip. Tuxedo from AJ's? Let AJ's get you noticed. A Bakersfield tradition for over 25 years. Specializing in Pierre Cardin, Christian Dior, Oscar De La Renta, and Calvin Klein. AJ's Tuxedo Junction with three great locations to serve you. 
Teaching your teenager to drive doesn't have to be like swimming with sharks. Let the professionals at Precision Driving School help. Our instructors have the expertise to teach all aspects of defensive driving that help our students gain the confidence and skills needed to pass their driving test the first time. Precision Driving School, we make driving with your teenager as relaxing as a day on the beach. Classes are forming now, so call or visit us today on the corner of 19th and Oak. If Windows 95, Pentium 133, the Internet and Gigabytes have you all confused, then you should buy your computer at Art Technology, your local computer connection with personal service for just the right equipment at the lowest prices and service after the sale. Check this fall special. I'm Alex Rogers, owner of Art Technology. Come and see for yourself why we have the warehouse stores beat, hands down, on price and service. Don't you buy a computer until you check with Art Technology, three blocks north of Costco at the clock tower. If you've had an accident and are suffering from any of these symptoms, listen to your body and call us today. I'm Dr. Rudy Herrera of Mind and Body Chiropractic. Call us at 837-1505 in Bakersfield or in Delano at 721-1506. Good evening and welcome to Time Warner Cable Channel 16's Prep Football Game of the Week. Tonight's game, the annual matchup between the BHS Drillers and the Garces High Rams. Bobby? Great tradition, always a good game, although the last couple of years the score hasn't maybe indicated that, but tonight I think it's going to be a little bit different. You know, I played one of the first games in the series, which dates me. Uh, this uh, annual rivalry started in 1969, and Garces won three of the first four encounters. The first one, 21-0, and in 1971, the biggest blowout in favor of the Rams, 43-18. Well, you are dating yourself now, yes, Mark. Yes, I am. But I think what's, what's going on with both these programs is that they're celebrating some some, some very special times this year. Garces is in their 50th year of playing football at the school, and of course, everybody knows Bakersfield High School. This is their 100th centennial celebration. Uh, it's just two programs that are rich in tradition, two programs that within their own league and within their own section have been powerhouses, and hopefully tonight, and I know everybody on, probably on both sides wants to see both teams really get after it, and hopefully we'll have a close game. This is John Finucci's 13th year at Garces. He won four consecutive central section titles in the 80s, Hasn't won since then as far as the championship is concerned. He's been to the finals twice in the 90s and has not succeeded but played very well. Pat Preston in his 11th year at BHS, and he's had a tremendous career there. Yeah, we all know about Pat and the things he's done at Bakersfield High School and the tremendous athletes that have come out of Bakersfield High School. And, and I think Garces has been back on a roll the last three to four years. And, of course, last year they lost to Corcoran in the Valley Championship game. Bakersfield was eliminated, you know, surprisingly in the quarterfinals to Redwood, a team that South High went on to blow out. So I think in some respects this is the BHS team that, that has some question marks. I think they want to prove some things. And, of course, if you're Garces, you're the, you're the little guy trying to knock off the Giants, so you know what that means. It was always David versus Goliath. One thing about BHS, you know, they were trying to prove they can win without Steve Wofford. The last year they had a team with a lot of talent, but they were young. This year dominated by a senior offensive and defensive line, and they have more maturity in the backfield. They're not big on the offensive line. They're huge. I mean, I thought they were big last year, but we checked their, you know, look at, looking at their roster, they are just huge, and they're deep. They're big, and they're deep. So the thing that, again, we alluded to this in, in our, in our pregame show, the thing Garces has got to do is not necessarily stop the run early, but stop the run late when they start to wear you down, a la that old John Robinson USC philosophy of we're going to wear you down, we're going to beat you late in the game. Garces on the other side has Drew Johns. Drew Johns last year threw for 1,400 yards and threw for 11 touchdowns in the wing tee, running the wing tee with Tobias and they're just and, and Mo Hoffer and I think he, they're looking for him to have a tremendous year throwing the ball. I think they will throw the ball more to complement the run. BHS of course has what everybody's been talking about, the secret weapon, Rodney Wright. The transfer from South High who last year it seemed like every time he touched the ball he was gone for a big play. He is going to make their team extra special, and he is one of those guys in the line of a Parker and an Adams and an Oliver, and we can go on and on and on, and BHS has the weapons, and they've got the speed. And Garces is in their second year with their green and gold uniforms, a la Notre Dame, as they play the drillers tonight, who are in white with blue trim. And as we mentioned, Garces' last victory in the series was 1991. And John Finucci feels very confident about a victory tonight. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I, I think he should feel confident. I think he's got a senior class coming back. 
He's got skilled people that have been with him for three years, and I think they should feel comfortable. But when you're playing the drillers, it's a tough thing, you know. And I think a lot of people have been asking me when they ask us, you know, uh, well, who do you think is going to win? Our VHS is going to blow him out, and I don't think that's going to be the case. He's for the game on my side of the ball. If I'm Garces, I've got to score. I've got to be on the field offensively, and I've got to negate any big plays. Last year, 14 to three, two minutes left. We talked about it in the pregame. Wofford. Garces punted, Walford runs it back, two minutes left in the half, changes the home momentum of the game. Garces must eliminate the big plays and keep their offense on the field. VHS just has to do what they normally do, beat you up up front and let their skill players do their thing. The one thing about Garces, they like to contain the ball and keep it away from VHS. It doesn't take a long time for the drillers to score. Not at all. And we're about ready for the kickoff for tonight's game between the Garces High Rams and the VHS Drillers. VHS has about five or six guys up at their own 47-yard line. Uh, uh, apparently looking for maybe an onside kick, but I'm sure Garces will kick it away. Matt Pearl, we're not sure if he's available for offensive duty tonight for the Rams. He's an excellent kickoff guy and still a goal and team man. A uh, tremendous athlete. Had about 11 home runs in baseball last year for Garces. Yeah, a little bit banged up, but nice to see him out there. Of course, in this kind of a game, who's going to miss it, right? It's his last chance as a senior. He's been around forever at Garces. Takes it high to the left side, but very short. VHS fumbles it at their own 32-yard line. And the drillers come up with it. A high kick that was very difficult to handle for the man on the far side. Yeah, fielded by one of the up men who's probably not used to handling that. And I'll tell you what, that was almost the break that Garces would have said, hey, if we could have drawn it up, let's make this guy fumble. We talked about they didn't want to kick it deep. Right, exactly. And that's one of the things that I'm sure they've talked about. They do not want the ball in Wright's hands or Dugas's hands. Those guys could make plays. And so that's that's the other that's where your special teams becomes a big factor in the game. Not only on punt returns and kickoff returns, but how you place when you kick. Well, last week in the scrimmage against Highland, Garces looked somewhat weak against the outside plays. They were good against the pass, against the inside running plays. VHS with the ball through the 32-yard line. Hand off to Bennett, up to about the 35, 36-yard line, a short gain for the VHS Drillers. And it's just a simple straight-ahead hitter. And uh, of course, anybody that, that knows high school football over the last three years, if you're a Driller supporter, you know Bennett. Bennett is the all-purpose guy, tremendous athlete, and the kid can do a lot of things. And I, I tend to think that uh, possibly next year we might see him wearing a, a red clad jersey up here uh, right where we're broadcasting the game. As a matter of fact, at Bakersfield College, uh, they're very high on him, and he's just a tremendous athlete. Dan Tompia, the left tackle for BHS, 6'3", 300. Huge. That's all we need to say about that. He looks big from up here. Second down and four for BHS. Ball hands it off to Bennett across the 40-yard line, just shy of the first down. It'll be third and maybe one for the drillers. And we, we alluded to it earlier in the, in the uh, pregame, Mark, as regards to the quarterback situation. It looks like Nate Lewis is going to be the starter. Uh, he got the nod. But, you know, Ty Hammond's game, he was a transfer, just like Rodney Wright from West High School, and, and uh, they're very high on him. He throws the ball extremely well. So, you know, this is another thing that Garces is going to have to deal with, too. They've got two talented athletes who can both scramble. They both have speed. So we'll see how VHS is going to utilize that situation. Full house back in for the drillers. The ball getting around the outside of first down to Dumas. Has the first down across the 50 to the 45 out of bounds in Garces territory. The speed of factor dipping inside and going to the outside. Yeah, running those inside plays off tackle to kind of set up the outside on the speed. They had a full house backfield that time, and they, they ran wide to Garces' left side. And, the thing that we talked about earlier is that Garces cannot afford to give up any big plays, and one of the things that they've got to do is stretch the field so that those linebackers can pursue and make plays. They struggled with that play against Highland last week in the scrimmage. I think Dugas has gained some weight over last year. He's 5'11", 190 with great speed. Bennett's about 188 pounds, so they're yeah. powerful backs. Right, and, and both of those guys know how to find a hole. That's one of the things they do really well. Once they get into the hole, they know how to run. And their line pick up some big holes for them. Run, so we'll talk about some of the other line in just a moment. First time for BHS. Split backfield. Play to Bennett hitting the backfield and drop for about a yard loss. And it looked like that was uh, the middle linebacker there. That looked like Tobias on that play. And defensively, they rely on Tobias to make plays. And we just talked about when you stretch the field and Tobias is going to pursue and make plays, he's got to make those kinds of plays tonight. And he's got to be he's got to be busy, he's got to make hits, and he's got to make contact on every play. They need him flying around. He loves to fly around. He loves this game, and I think he's more effective the north and south uh, type of situation on defense. Second and 11 for VHS. Receivers to each side. Rolling out. 
The pass is complete by Lewis to be close to the first down inside the Garces 40 yard line, probably at about the 38. It'll be third down for uh, VHS, about third and two. You know, we talked about how they were going to use their receiving core and how they were going to mix things up, and he sure looked good throwing the ball that time, didn't he? And, it, and one of the things that VHS in the past has been criticized for is that they have great backs, but they don't throw the ball very well. But when you, when you can run like that, you really don't need to throw, right? But I think what Bakersfield High is going to have to do this year, and I know that their coaching staff, I'm sure they worked hard on it. I saw them in passing league in the summer, and they threw the ball extremely well. So if they can add that arsenal to their offense, they're going to be very hard to stop. That will help them against some of the elite teams that they play. Gary Austin, the receiver on that particular play. Third and two for BHS, single back. Pass is knocked in near incomplete. It looked like... For the Garces Rams, John Carew had a hand on it, knocked it down, so it could be fourth down for BHS. So I'm sure in the situation, they'll probably go for it. It's fourth and two at about the 37-yard line of Garces territory. Yeah, with that uh, with that size up front, I'm sure they will. That's what Garces is going to have to do to, to the BHS passing game. Uh, they they have got to get penetration and they got to put pressure on Lewis. You know, one one number we haven't been haven't heard called yet is Rodney Wright. They haven't even looked his way to throw the ball there yet. Schoolhouse backing for the Drillers. Bennett around the outside to the 35, has the first down, knocked out of bounds at the 30. First and 10 for BHS, Higdon knocked him out of bounds, but Higdon's about 145 pounds, Bennett 190, Bennett will win that war most of the time. And actually, Garces did a pretty good job of springing that out. I thought Bakersfield disguised that play well, again, the full house backfield, and you know, that's where Bennett's deceiving. I watched him play all last year, and you never thought he had that kind of speed, but once he turns the corner, he has breakaway speed. I'm not saying he's a Walford or anything, but he has the kind of speed where he can make plays. And again, Bakersfield High up front doing a nice job. John Coffey for BHS, the right tackle at 62290. First and 10 for the drillers at the Garces 30. They drop back. Pass is looped. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Rodney Wright. Nice coverage on the far side by the Garces Rams as Lewis threw that pass. It'll be second and ten. Yeah, and that time they went to the they went away from the strong side of the field and threw back to right on a little like a post up. And uh, he was open actually, but the ball was overthrown. I can't say how many times I saw him play last year in Mr. Roddy Wright. It, it seemed like every time he touched the ball, you never knew what was gonna happen. He would create a play. So I'm wondering, are they gonna do some somewhat of that West uh, West Coast style offense where they just pitch it to him and let him run or throw the short out to him and let him make plays. I would assume that's, I know that's what I would be doing. Right in the slot, right. Austin wide right for BHS, second and 10, split back to Lewis. Pass complete to right. He loses one tackle, is inside the 25 to about the 22. Just a quick little move there. Picked up an extra couple of yards. And there's that West Coast that I was oh, talking yeah. about right there. See that little quick pitch, that's that, I mean, everybody's doing it. That's that little, you know, Montana to Rice, Young to Rice thing. And they put, that time they put him in the slot. See, that's, he's so dangerous. He has yeah, such great speed. you can put him speed. anywhere on a football field. Right, and he's going to make plays. And then, which defensively, how do you match up? If they stretch you out, you know, it's very difficult for Garces to match up with that speed. You want to get him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Third and three for VHS. About the Garces' 24-yard line. Lewis to Bennett. First down to about the 20. Should have the first down. Running like a bulldog, barreling forward. Well, right now, what we're seeing so far is what, if, if we're Garces, we're saying this is what we didn't want to see. We don't want our defense on the field for a very long time. We want our offense to get on the field and make plays and keep VHS's offense off the field. And right now, VHS has already started. It. They've started their drive methodically. They've mixed in the pass. Uh, and I think what they're going to initially do, start to do here in a little bit, is start maybe to get right on some reverses. It looks like they're going to be setting some of those things up. And again, they're just pounding Garces up front right now. Tobias made the tackle for the Rams on the last play. First and 10 for BHS. Quarterback keeper to the 15, has a block. 10 yard line around the outside. Another great block. Dives into the end zone. Touchdown, BHS Miller. Looks like and a fake handoff to Dugas in the backfield. I don't know if that was a design play or if it was somewhat of a mix up, but an excellent run by the quarterback for BHS. Picked up some blocks downfield and used that speed. And Ability That's the, the factor way. that we talked about before the game, the athleticism of the drillers and their skill positions. Nate Lewis made that play. Should have been sacked, actually. Penetration by the Garces front four. They got a hand on him. He slipped it, picked up a blocker. He created that play on his own. You can't coach that. And I thought he'd be down maybe at the nine-yard line and then pick up another block with around the flag. Too much speed. Kick is up and good for the BHS drillers. 
seven nothing with 7.23 to play in the first quarter. You're listening to Prep Football on Time Warner Cable, Channel 16. Went to his left, dipped in at about the 10 yard line, had another couple of blocks there, went inside the, uh, the flag for the touchdown. And as you said, a lot of athleticism as BHS used up some clock on that touchdown. Mohoffer, the ball carrier, across the 20 to about the 24 yard line as Garces will have the first position of this ball game down 7 0. Yeah, and I think one of the things that they've got to do is they've got to answer back. They, they Maybe not particularly score on their first possession, but they've got to move the ball. They've got to keep their defense off the field for a while, let them rest a little bit. You know, we need to kind of say a special thanks to KGEO and Bill Curtis because before the game, we had a little mix-up in our booths up here. For those of you familiar with uh, Bakersfield College, we're sitting on the Mount Vernon side and had a kind of a mix-up with the booths, and we just want to say to Bill and everybody at KGEO, thank you for working with us, and, and uh, we appreciate it and uh, love hearing you on the uh, radio. And uh, so we just wanted to say that to, to Bill, say thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Bill. Clint Tobias, the first ball carrier for the Garces. Ram hit at the line of scrimmage, second and 10 for Garces as they come out of their wing T formation against the BHS Drillers. Ajo and Tony Giovanni wide to the left for Garces as they set up very quickly. Tobias in the middle. Mohawk up the left side. Johns on the keeper. Hit and dropped at about the 25 yard line. Maybe picked up a yard. It'll be third and long for Garces. So once again, here they're in a passing situation early in this ball game, down seven nothing. Yeah, and I, I, to be honest with you, I think that's really not a bad situation to be in with Johns back there because he can throw the ball. I mentioned, you know, in our pregame, we talked about a few things, but this kid is one of the top five passers in the valley. There's no doubt about it. And I think this year he's going to put up bigger numbers than he did last year. Again, they have to move the ball and they have to make Vegas for a high play. Third and nine for the Garces Rams, Mohoffer in motion. John's rolling to his right, looking down, throw the pass. Almost picked off at a 35 yard line incomplete. The ball is intended for Ernie, intended for the Garces Rams. Uh, you don't think about that, he kind of telegraphed that pass, and the BHS player was just waiting for it. But fortunately for Garces, BHS does not come up with the INT, and Garces will punt it fourth down, fourth and a long eight with 6.06 to play in the first quarter. Kind of interesting that time because they rolled to his right, he's a left handed thrower. Maybe they've seen something in films or in, in playing the drillers over the years. They, they feel like they might be able to do some things in the flat out there, but not the, not the greatest possession for the first possession for Garces. I'm sure that's not what they wanted. But again, here's another play, a situation where they've got to kick the ball to Rodney Wright. And how, what are they going to do? Are they going to kick away from him? Or are they going to kick to him? Or what are they going to do? Matt Pearl will be doing the punting for the Garces Rams, not being used offensively tonight because he has an injury. An excellent athlete, as uh, we talked about, and he had a 40-plus yard field goal against Centennial last year in that big win for the Rams, which clinched the South Florida Championship. The Garces comes out uh, with not a very impressive first series against BHS, and the Droves, of course, keeping it on the ground, making big plays, scoring and leading 7-0. As you mentioned, Garces wanted to come out strong, probably get on the scoreboard first, and find himself down 7-0. They need a good punt here, they need a great defensive effort. Yeah, they don't want to panic, they just want to play special teams off as well. <laughs> they want to make sure that they don't let Rodney Wright make a big play. He's back there at his own 30-yard line, Mr. Wright, Rodney Wright. Let's see if BHS goes for the block. Pearl standing at his own 13-yard line. Nice snap, they're not coming. Low line drive punt. 
Rodney gets it on the bounce to the 36. I think Clint Tobias hit him straight up. He's about the 35-yard line. And that's great coverage. That is great coverage by Garces on that play. That, that's a great way to start off the game. And I, I know Coach Benucci talked about special teams, special teams, special teams. And we must not allow them to have the big play. That's a, that's a really good incentive for them early in the game. Usually when somebody for Garces makes a hit like that, it's usually number six. Yeah, it is, normally. It was last year quite a bit. Didn't go for the fake at all. Well, we talked about that earlier. He's their guy. He's going to fly around and make the hits. He's going to get everybody pumped up. First and 10 for the drillers at their own 35-yard line. A couple of backs behind Lewis. Inside pass to right incomplete at about the 35-yard line. A short type of toss trying to get him loose against the DB. Yeah, and Jeff Martin did a nice job of making a play on that. He was he was guarding the inside slot on that because uh, right was the slot on the inside. And again, that's that, that quick hitch and run, you know, make a play. And we're seeing them use them. We talked about that earlier. They're going to do that a lot. But that time, Martin made a really nice play. Gary Austin wide to the left for BHS. Right in the slot. Bennett, the ball carrier. Hit at the 36-yard line, maybe gets up to about the 37. Tobias was in on the stop, and a few other Garces Rams. Jeff Martin that converging time, on the tackle. <laughs> that time, Tobias had a 275-pound lineman trying to block him while he made the tackle, and it just says a lot about him. He's just a, he's a hitter. He's a kid that, like you mentioned earlier, Mark, he loves to play the game, and he's tough, and he's hard-nosed, and he is the center of the back one of that defense. The two guards for BHS are around 210 pounds of center. Is 295 and the tackles are 300 and I think about 290. So yeah. a lot of beef up front for the drillers. Yeah, they're not small, are they? Third and long, third and about seven for the itches, 513 to play in the first quarter. They come on the blitz, the pass incomplete by Lewis. And nice pressure by the Garces Rams, Matt and Tom Giovanni. And they forced Lewis to roll out wide to his right, hurry the throw, and it was incomplete. I think they had a blitz on that time, and I think they read. BHS was trying to stretch them out and ran a back out of the backfield underneath, and he was actually wide open. But a nice job on the blitz, good call defensively, and this is a great possession for Garces defensively. Fourth down for BHS, fourth and about seven. 5.05 to play in the first quarter, 7 nothing in favor of the drillers. Antone Giovanni and Mohawk will be back for the Garces. You're listening to Prep Football exclusively on Time Warner Cable, Channel 16. G D D. The Get Bus is the ride for me. From there to here and here to there. G E T goes everywhere. What can you do for cleaner air? Ride to work with time to spare. Yeah, you ain't seen nothing yet. Here's what we say. Get on the get on the get bus. Get bus. Get on. Get on the get. Get on the get bus. Get bus. Get on. Get on the get. Get on the get bus. Get bus. Get on. Coffee in the morning gets you on your way. With something cold any time of the day. Sounds real good. What do you say? It's easy, it's fast. We're on your way. Take a fast trip to the fast trip. Something to go and something to sip. That's the fast trip. Take a fast trip today and pick up an ice cold super guzzler or regular guzzler only at Fast Trip. BHS with a fourth down situation, Mole Hopper and Tony Giovanni deep for Garces at their own 20 yard line. A flag is down. Short punt will drop at about the 34. BHS, after the nice roll, will down it at the 24 yard line. See what the flag is all about. You can expect things like this during the first game of the year. Well, isn't it a beautiful night, Mark? I mean, those, beautiful of you, night. those of you watching the game on television on Time Warner, we're, we're truly excited to be a part of this broadcast, and we're, we're excited to be a part of Time Warner, and we want you to tune in every week. We, we definitely have the best schedule, and you can only get it right here on Time Warner. We've got some great games coming up. If you're a West High fan, we got West High. If you're a Foothill fan, we got Foothill. We got them all. We have them next week, by the way. We do. We'll have West on uh, the game for next week. Which now, of course, is not a league game. It's a match between the Southeast Defending League team and SWIL. Legal procedure against BHS. 
And Evadale will go punt again as uh, 4.53 to play in the first quarter. Garnsons would like to get the ball in a good field position. Maybe get a nice run back here from Mohawk or, or Anton Giovanni. Yeah. Punter back to his own 17-yard line. A great snap. Gets it away. Beautiful spiral. Fair catch by Mulhofer at his own 27-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Garces Rams and green and gold tonight against the BHS Drillers. Don't you love it? It's that, it's that it. Notre Dame feel, and it's great, and it's just great for high school football. You know, we were alluding to earlier about the tradition of both these teams and the, and the great success they've had over the years, and it, this is a great way to start the high school season, especially for us on Time Warner, our first game. First television game for both of us. Two backs behind Drew Johns. Ball is given to Tobias up the middle. To the right side, gains about two yards. To be up to the 30-yard line, and a swarm of BHS drillers around him. Diaz. Also, Lingo converging on the tackle for the drillers. Well, that's that's definitely one of BHS's strengths. You know, they're gonna they're gonna hit you with the line of scrimmage. They're gonna make you do things that you don't normally do. And then their skill people, their corners and their linebackers and their safeties come up, and they they put a hat on you. They're gonna hit you. So you got to be ready for it. Second and eight for the Garcia Rams. Mulhoffer, Tobias behind John. Now Mulhoffer back in the wing, wing left. Brian with the ball to the three, tries to get on the outside, dragged down, gets up to about the 33. Nice play by John DeBorjak for DHS, 6'4", 200. And he he did played a, for Preston last year. He did a really nice job because he was actually getting blocked and fell down and grabbed a hold of him and just held on. And that's that inside counter that Garces ran so effectively last year against Bakersfield High School. So you know that they saw that in the films, and, and that time it didn't work at all. I, I still, you know, I, I alluded to earlier with Johns. You know, I know a lot of people. There are some great quarterbacks in the area. There's Dover at Highland. I mean, there's Thrasher at uh, at uh, South High School. I mean, Behind the line. Yeah, I mean, there's just a, an abundance of great quarterbacks. And also in the paper, Bakersfield, California, did a great write-up today mm -hmm. talking about those prep quarterbacks, and Johns is definitely one of them. Third and three for the Rams. Johns back to corner. Heavy pressure. Flips it downfield. Incomplete. The ball intended for Anton Giovanni. Double covered at the 30-yard line. And he had to get that one off. So it'll be fourth down for Garces. And they'll be punting from their own territory once again. And again, Bakersfield High did a nice job of getting pressure on the quarterback. He didn't have time to set up. That play really never developed. He had to throw that thing too early. And actually, he was open, but he threw it too early. And again, it's actually Bakersfield High's defense doing a nice job of getting pressure on it. Well, as we talked about, they're strong on the offense and defensive line. They are going to apply that pressure. They have a lot of guys on the line of scrimmage. Maybe looking to block this punt by Pearl, but they're not coming. Off the right side of his foot has a spiral. We'll see where they mark it. Basically, in this game, Garces, whether they're punting or kicking it off, they're trying to kick the ball away from Rodney Wright, whether they kick it left or right. Well, you got to. If you kick the ball to him, he can make anything happen. You got to keep the ball out of his hands, and so far, they've done a nice job of that. Go, dear! 2.58 to play in the first quarter, 7 0 BHS over the Garces Rams. Last year, Garces led at 1 point, 14 3. BHS came back with a touchdown return by James Lawford and actually won that game 37 14 as they dominated the game in the second half, generally from uh, midway through the third quarter for the rest of the game. Garst made some turnovers and DHS, of course, had a huge play. Yeah, and I think that, that one play before the half, we've talked about it a few times, and it, it broke their back. But then in the, I think in the second half when Garst came out, they kind of lost their momentum because of that play. And, you know, again, that's just Bakersfield's speed. You know, they just have so many ways to beat you. Miller, the ball player, up to about the 30, 31 yard line. He plays a lot of DB for DHS. He backs up Dugas. Saw extensive time last year, Kelly Miller. They just have a lot of people that they can fill in. I mean, that, that depth factor with the drillers is something that is really important. And, that, and again, that's how they wear on you. And they have a lot of people who can hurt you. Well, Drew John said Garces is too deep and DHS is four deep. Yeah, I read that in the paper today. Yeah, yeah. that was interesting. And I, I think, I think you know, it's interesting about some of these high school athletes, how aware they are and how smart they are nowadays. You know, I know back when we were in high school, back when we were playing, I don't know if he really paid attention to that stuff the way they do now. And maybe it's just the way things have changed in, in high school and college sports, but they're on top of it. Bergman, the center for BHS, 6'5", about 290. Great hit by Tobias in the backfield on a draw play. He's made about three solemn hits tonight. And nobody was fooled on that play, including he Mr. Tobias. <laughs> he he stayed wasn't. home and put a pop on him. And that was a big hit. 
you know, so far, with the exception of the first drive, Garces' defense Tommy has played Tommy extremely Tommy well. I mean, they, they haven't given up a big play. Tommy I say Tommy that Tommy to this point yeah. because at any time that could happen. But they're really doing a nice job, and they are making some big plays to get the crowd involved in the game. Well, Clinton has a habit of doing that. Third and 10 for BHS at their own 27-yard line, 135 to play in the first quarter. Garces needs a big defensive stop right here to get the ball back in good field position. Tyler Poulton wide to the left for BHS, right in the slot. Lewis, pass incomplete. Nice coverage by Garces on this side. And it'll be fourth down for the BHS Drillers. And that was Drew Johns out there covering him. So Drew Johns showing his athleticism, playing on, playing on the other side of the ball. And, and that was great coverage. I know in the 1980s when Garces won four consecutive Detroit Division titles, Mike Lewis would come in once in a while on fourth down situations. He's the quarterback. And he was 6'1", a great athlete. He was able to knock a lot of balls away with his, you know, ability. Yeah, there weren't many things Mike couldn't do. He was a tremendous athlete. He could turn do a lot of things. Mohoffer and Tony Giovanni back deep to their own 30-yard line. Low punt. They will let it drop. Take the BHS bounce to about the 19, 18-yard line. Probably rolled about 10 yards. And it'd be first and 10 for the Garces Rams with 106 to play in the first quarter, down 7-0. A uh, fairly quick first period. Very quick, very quick. Maybe it's because that's our first time on television and uh, time's flying, huh? It could be <laughs> true. Well, both teams have kept the ball on the ground quite a bit, especially BHS, and they've been running out the clock. I expected Garces to throw the ball a little bit more. You know, one of the one of the weaknesses that the BHS defense has had over the years, if there was a weakness, was defending, was defending the, pass. the pass. And I expected Garces to throw the ball a little bit more. Maybe they're just setting that up. Tobias behind Johns. Johns takes it, setting up the throw, has some time. Wide open is Mulhofer at the 47-yard line across midfield and to the 47-yard line of BHS territory. He was just waiting for it. And that is a big, big play. That time he took a three-step drop, turned, and actually looked at the other side of the field. We were talking about how smart he is. He read that the safety had, had drifted over to play the post, and Mulhofer was just dragging on the inside of the field, and he said, okay, I'll just throw it right over there, and he did, and a big play for Garces. Now, credit to Garces offensive line for giving John time to throw in that physical play with 45 seconds left in the first quarter. Garces with the first down at the 47-yard line, beats his territory, and from Giovanni in motion. Inside handoff will lose about two. You know, more teams are running the wing tee. Uh, you know, Clovis West, of course, with all their success and the tremendous program they have in Fresno. And now you've, you've seen Foothill take what was a traditional running game over Ned Permenter's years at Foothill, change his philosophy a little bit and go to the wing tee. And, boy, they put out some backs. And they have a great one this year. But they're doing that. And now Garces has taken this into the South Sequoia League. And now they are doing tremendous things with it. But there are a lot of teams who have incorporated this into their offense. Of course, you have to have the athletes, too. Johns with a handoff to Mulhoffer across middle to 50, 45 yard line, 40, has a first down. Dragged down at about the 32 yard line of BHS territory. Brian Mulhoffer, great speed. He's a track man for the Garcia Grand. Well, he's their outside speed. And again, they set up that counter. They came back inside and they did a nice job of blocking down on the end. And when Mulhoffer gets outside last year, he ran for 11 touchdowns. He is going to get to the end zone. And Mulhoffer right now is making it exciting for Garces to make it plays. He knows how to get to the finish line, too. After one, it's BHS 7, Garces nothing. This is the high school football game of the week exclusively on Time Warner Cable Challenge. Hill Springs Water. Tuxedo from AJ's? Let AJ's get you noticed. A Bakersfield tradition for over 25 years. Specializing in Pierre Cardin, Christian Dior, Oscar De La Renta, and Calvin Klein. AJ's Tuxedo Junction with three great locations to serve you. Teaching your teenager to drive doesn't have to be like swimming with sharks. Let the professionals at Precision Driving School help. Our instructors have the expertise to teach all aspects of defensive driving that help our students gain the confidence and skills needed to pass their driving test the first time. Precision Driving School, we make driving with your teenager as relaxing as a day on the beach. Classes are forming now, so call or visit us today on the corner of 19th and Oak. Garson with the ball first and 10 in BHS territory as we begin the second quarter here from Memorial Stadium. Mark Heffernan with Bobby Sharp. Mulhoffer with the ball. 
hit and dropped in the backfield on a reverse. He'll lose about four yards. It'll be second and long. And boy, for Zach the Manning Rams. did a great job that time to stay at home. They ran the reverse, and again, every time Garces likes to run that counter, they're going to come back and run the reverse. I mean, I've sure. watched them play a lot last year, and I know when you scout somebody, you think you know what they're going to do, but defending it is a whole other thing, right? But that time, Zach did a nice job of staying home, made a shoestring tackle because Mohawk had just made a big play on that the, the time before. He waited for it and turned it in. So an excellent play by the defensive player for BHL. And we got a timeout. No, nope, they're going to wind us back. But we want to say right now, thank you to our sponsors, AJ Tuxedos, Art Technology, Precision Driving School, Fast Trip Stores, where I get a lot of my, uh, my Sprite, uh, Golden Empire Transit, and Total Body Chiropractic. Pass to the far side is incomplete, and now Garson faces the third and long situation after that long run by Mohawk to close out the first quarter. They're third and long in BHS territory at the 37-yard line. And they don't want to let this drive stall out. They need to do something with this drive. They need to make a play here, obviously. Everybody knows that, but they don't want this drive to stall out. They like even get down into field goal range to get a field goal would be a plus. It has been a plus for them. But you must make Bakersfield high play on the defensive end. You've got to score. And if you don't score early, late in the game, you know what's going to happen. And you have to keep the ball away from him. Antoine Giovanni wide to the right. Mohoffer, Tobias in the backfield behind Johns. Third and 12. Drew Rowan to his right. Gets away from the rush. His pass complete to Mohoffer on the far side. Out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. It'll be short of the first down. Fourth and maybe four. I think in this situation, Garst will go for it. It's the Mo Show, definitely. Yeah. They're handing it off to him. They're reversing it to him. They're running the counters. They're getting him in the flat. He's doing everything. I'll tell you what, Johns did a great job that time, eluding yeah. the rush, getting outside, showing his athleticism, and then putting the money, uh, putting the ball right on the money to Mohawk. That's where you have to have that strength as a quarterback, 6'2", about 180, and maturity that he didn't have last year. Fourth and four for Garces. Looks like Tobias is going to set up for a field goal from the 35-yard line. This will be a 45-yard effort. He's made him from this far before. He has a great leg. Snap is down. The kick is blocked. In there was Mr. Rodney Wright. Just blew in there and blocked that attempted field goal attempt by Matt Pearl. And then nobody blocked him. He just came on the right they never side. Saw him. Yeah, he, <laughs> I don't know if he was too fast or what, but nobody blocked him. I think he was too fast. Yeah, he got he outside. Was in there like a flat. He got outside in a hurry and stretched his body. That's a great effort by Rodney Wright. And again, helping his team in any way right. that he can, using his athleticism to make a big play. You see Matthews before, sometimes they're throwing a guy who's 6'5, six, 6'6, six, six, to stand in the middle and jump up and, and block field goal attempts. Remember or whatever the old like Oakland Raiders? They used yeah. to put Ted Hendricks in the middle of the line. Remember that? Now I'm dating myself. <laughs> Matt Stork. They had some characters back in those days. First and 10 for BHS at their own 27 yard line. And off inside goes Bennett. Bennett. And he is cut down at about the line of scrimmage as we begin the second quarter of play. We're at 10.50 to play in the first half. 7-0 BHS, as they've been using the clock very efficiently tonight. And if you're Garces, are you upset because you're down 7 up and are you upset because that drive stalled? Well, you're upset because you didn't block somebody. You missed an assignment. That's what you're upset about. They did a nice job of driving the ball down the field, made Bakersfield play on the defensive end, and I think they maybe learned some things about a few plays that they're going to try to use, <laughs> right? And so that was a good possession for Garces. Again, they have got to get the ball into the end zone, though. Well, I think the odds are against him making a 45-yard, even though he is capable of doing it. Everything has to be right. Of course, you have to block everybody. Uh, Wright just kind of came from the blind side and never saw him. He's like a flash. Yeah, he did. And as I look across at the VHS side, it, it is, it's filled up. There's a nice crowd tonight. And on the Garces side, of course, there's a wave of green down there. Cheerleaders from both sides are doing a great job. I think VHS went out and recruited about 40 cheerleaders. If you look across there, if we get that on camera, I'll tell you what, they've got a ton of cheerleaders across there. But this is a great environment. It's great for the kids. It's, it's just a great environment to coach in. And, and it's exciting to be a part of it. Garces had a big rally at school, and BHS uh, had some interesting things happen in Driller Country. And so this is, a, like I said, a big annual event that's been going on since 1969. Well, I don't know anybody that, that's gone to school in, in Bakersfield that went to a school other than Bakersfield High School that wasn't a driller killer, right? Not that I'm not, you know, saying anything against Bakersfield High School, but everybody's a driller killer. Everybody that's wants to be a driller. Be. Exactly, right. exactly. And it was in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, and on. It always has been. Well, when you have great tradition and you're successful, that's the way it should be. People come after you, and that's, hey, that's great. You want people to come after you. You want the challenge. Second and nine for BHS. 10-21 to play in the first half. I believe Hammond is the quarterback for the Drillers. 
A single running back, Bennett, run up behind the tackle. Hammond rolling to his right, looking downfield. Fires it. Man wide open. Roddy right incomplete. Nobody was within about 15 yards of right at the 30 yard line of Garces territory. Oh, Marquis was wide fortunate open. A completion for the Garces Rams. Wide open. And here comes DHX using their double weapon, right? And here comes Hammonds throwing the ball deep. Now he takes snaps at quarterback. I love the Bakersfield College thing a little bit there, huh? Sure. Changing quarterbacks a little bit. But Rodney Wright was wide open. But again, a good job by Garces to continue to pursue, not leave the play, not quit on the play. And actually the hit on Hammond is the one is the play that actually made him overthrow Rodney Wright. Well, if you force a quarterback to throw in a run, sometimes they're not effective in that particular fashion. And they made him hurry it just a bit. I believe Probably a better runner than the thrower. I believe we got a penalty on the play too. I think they had a illegal receiver downfield, so it wouldn't matter anyway. Tobias checking out the defensive signals for the Garces Rams. 10 11 to play in the second quarter. VHS, Bakersfield High School 7. Garces High School nothing. The Garces hanging in here in the first half. They'd like to make a big defensive play, maybe come up with a turnover and cut down on that field. Because Rodney Wright uh, blocked a 45 yard field goal attempt by Matt Pearl. And the first touchdown scored by Nate Lewis, the quarterback of VHS. Tremendous athletic play, received some great blocks down so, but as you mentioned, he did a lot of it on his own. That guard should probably should have had him for the game. Yeah, there's poor tackling on that play, and I'm sure Coach Tanuki would say that. Great athletes make the people play look like poor tackling. Yeah, but you got to tackle people. When you're playing a great team and they have athletes, you got to wrap up. There ain't excuses. you got to tackle. All right. Woo! Well, Hammond talking things over. Some of his running back. Officials are doing the same with uh, John Tanuki, his coaching staff for the Garnsons Rams, and also Pat Preston for the BHS Drillers. Don't you know they always do in a, in a high school or a college game? You've seen, on, you've seen it on NFL films. They make the guys get back. The players get excited, and the official came over and was making the Garnsons guys get back off the sidelines. Too pumped. Yeah, let them play. Let them get up there. Second and 14 for BHS. Fumble in the backfield, and it's picked up by Zugas. Runs across the 30 to about the 32. Yeah, I must turn that into a first down, maybe Boy, longer. Did, did they dodge a bullet on that one? Wow. Because if one of the Garces linemen would have looked up, they could have picked that one out of the air. But did he show some speed on that play? Yeah, we talked about it. You have to make those kind of plays. When the ball is loose, you have to jump on them against DHS. Got to make that play. I mean, to beat a team like that, you have to be there and grab the ball when they're in front of you. Great teams do the little things. You just have to be alert. Great teams do the little things, Mark. I'm not saying that anybody's asleep except us. No, we're not asleep. Hey, we're ready to go. Just but like this like should have been uh, maybe third and ten, and it's third and five for BHS at their own 33 yard line. Heads up played by Dugas. And the Phillips QB, two running backs behind him. Receiver sweep side. Ball is given to Bennett. Across the 35. Might have the first down. It depends on where they mark it. About the 37, 38 yard line. It is a first down for BHS. So Garza's had a chance to get the ball back. Maybe a great field position. And BHS came through with a couple of big wins. You know, when you're when you're playing important games, the margin of error is very small. You know, and so what you have to do is you have to capitalize on mistakes. You have to capitalize on plays. And those types of things, you do this catching that ball out of the air on the fumble. That's something Garza's has to capitalize on. If you're going to win the big games, the little things matter the most. And they keep possession of the football. 8.47 to play in the first half. 7-0 BHS over the Garces Rams. Right. Slot left. Hammond still at QB. Looking to pass on the left side. Plenty of time. Out in that pattern. Incomplete. Overthrew. Nice coverage on the far side for the Garces Rams. Mulhopper. And also Hignan. Well, he did a nice job of throwing that ball, though. He set up really nice, took a three-step drop, stayed in the pocket. That huge offensive line did a great job of giving him time to throw. And he threw a good ball. He just threw it a little bit too far. But, again, good coverage. And, again, it's, it's Mo time. Mohoffer doing the job on both ends. He's doing it all. Tyler Colton was the intended receiver for the BHS Drillers. 8.32 to play in the first half. It'll be second and 10 at their own 38-yard line. Let's good see. ball game to start the season. Let's see if Garces does some different things defensively. Are they going to gamble a little bit? Are they going to be a little more conservative defensively? Are they going to blitz? The last time they blitzed, they had success. Well, at second and ten, maybe they'll play this one conservative. Let's we'll see about the next play. I'm looking for the short drop. Is rushed and dropped for the loss at its own 36-yard line, but a late flag comes in. And I think we got a late hit is what that's going to be. Personal foul. Yep, we got a late hit. 
but they did blitz that time because Tobias came from his middle linebacker position and caused him to roll out that time and created the play. But a little bit overzealous, you know, you want to get in on the hit, a little bit too much, it can't hurt your team. That's one of those uncalled for plays. Call it! And you know, some of those particular penalties hurt Garnsey's last year early in the year. I, I often wonder as an official, you know, looking at it, because I've, I've coached for many years, but I often wonder as an official looking at that, you know, if a guy's on the ground and he gets blocked in or if he gets hit in like that, I mean, is that necessary? I mean, if a guy's doing it on purpose, if it looks like it's an intent to harm, you know what I'm saying? I mean, sometimes you get blocked in, sometimes your momentum carries you into it, and maybe that's not necessarily a flag every time. you got to let the kids maybe play. Maybe high school football officials maybe have a quick whistle at times? No, not at all. I mean, I, I think they should let the kids play, but, but you can't let it get out of hand. I'm just saying sometimes emotion creates those situations, right. and sometimes you got to let the kids play. Especially in the first half of a game like this. Eight minutes to play in the second quarter. VHS 7 guards is nothing. They're in the Rams' territory, 48-yard line. Split back behind Hammond. Ben at the ball carrier. Great balance as he gets across midfield, maybe to about the 47-yard line. Almost crawling on his knees. Of course, he'd be down if he was. Gains about a yard and a half and probably should have lost a half yard. Yeah, he should have lost a half yard. He shows his determination and, and intelligence. He, he got slipped up by Marlowe because Marlowe kind of nosedived him and clipped him, but he showed his athleticism, kept his kept his balance, and, and instead of losing yards, got two yards. And you know that's the thing about Bennett. Bennett is the kind of a kid that every coach loves to have on his team because he can do all the things. Plus, he's a tough, hard nose, give you everything he's got type of kid, and and he makes plays. And you know again, he's deceivingly fast. Second and nine for the Drillers. Wide to the left is Tyler Colson. Single running back behind Hammond. Right to this side. Having to throw as Rush gets away for Rolls to his left. He will run it across midfield. 45 stays on his feet. And close to the first down mark on the far side. So a lot of great speed that time, Ty Hammond. As he got around the outside, he picked up some good yards for the BHS Drillers. But again, poor tackling by Garces on that play because they wrapped Hammonds up about the 45-yard line, but they didn't tackle him. I mean, they put a helmet on him, but they didn't wrap him up, and he got three or four more yards. Instead of having a, a third and six, they got a third and a three. See, that, that, that's a big thing in a game like this. Garces must wrap up. They've got to tackle. Well, Garces has a tendency to have trouble tackling guys with great speed, and that's what comes against a team like this in San Joaquin. Dugas, the ball carry inside the 40, has a first down to about the 36-yard line. Adrian Dugas with his first carry in a while. Sets you know, off the right tackle for the first down for BHS. You know, I like talking about great names for high school football, college football. Anton Giovanni, is that a great name? There have been so many that have played here for Garces. It's unbelievable. I know, it seems like they have one every year. There's one kicking for St. Mary's now. They have two or three in the roster this year. They had a... Antoine Giovanni that played in the mid-80s with Mike Lewis and Gene right. Valfredo and right. those teams that won. I just love the name. It's a great name. None of them are that big, but they're always tough. They're real tough. And he did yeah. a great job that time stringing that play out, not letting them cut it back in. Something they didn't do on the prior play. They didn't do that. You know, while we got a break here on the field, we want to mention our sponsors again, and we couldn't do it without them. AJ's Tuxedos, uh, before we throw it to a break, Arc Technology, Precision Driving School, Fast Grip Stores, Golden Empire Transit, and Total Body Chiropractic. And we'll take a break. You're listening to the High School Football Game of the Week exclusively on Time Warner Cable, Channel 16. If Windows 95, Pentium 133, the Internet, and Gigabytes have you all confused, then you should buy your computer at Arc Technology, your local computer connection, with personal service for just the right equipment at the lowest prices and service after the sale. Check this fall special. The hot new six-speed CD-ROM drive, just $98. Call Arc for low prices on all RAM upgrades, including laptops and notebooks. And Arc will upgrade all Packard Bells. Don't you buy a computer until you check with Arc Technology, three blocks north of Costco at the Clock Tower. If you've had an accident and are suffering from any of these symptoms, listen to your body and call us today. I'm Dr. Rudy Herrera of Mind and Body Chiropractic. Call us at 837-1505 in Bakersfield or in Delano at 721-1506. First and 10 for VHS at the Garces 37-yard line, 641 to play in the second quarter. Hammonds remains at QB, Lewis start of the game. Ben at the ball carrier, breaks some poor tackling has 10 and more to about the 20-yard line. 
is on this drive, BHS beginning to wear down the Garces Rams. Court tackle and Wentz Skinner, he's a strong runner 190, but they are arm tackling quite a bit. And let's go back to the play where Dugas took the ball out of the air about five or six plays ago, and now BHS is all the way down five plays later inside their 30. And again, if you're Garces, you got to look at that and say, guys, we have, we have to make those plays so that they don't get into these situations to be able to score. The longer they stay on the field, that big, bad, huge offensive line wears down Garces, and that's not what the, the Garces coaches want. They can't have that. Well, the personal foul penalty really hurt Garces when they tackled Hammond for a loss, and then they gave him 15 yards and a first down, and then the other play where Beach just fumbled and Dugan picked it up. First and 10 for the Drillers at the Garces 21-yard line. A couple of running backs behind Hammond. Dugan, the ball carry inside the 20 to about the 15-yard line. Check that out. It's Kelly Miller for the second carry tonight. And just pounding the Garces Rams, moving the uh, defensive line back. Picking up about uh, five yards, five or six yards, second and four. And DHS can play short yardage all night long. They can play second and four, second and three, third and one. That's where they want to play. I mean, they their first two plays set up their, you know, their second and third down situations or their first down play because they are so good at running the football. And Garces is going to, again, they're going to have to get top. They're going to have to bowl their necks right now because they can't afford to give up a, any, any scores right here. John for LaRue, 6'3", 225 into the game for Garces. In a short down situation, that's second and four, 5'15 to play in the second quarter. Hammond looks to throw, has a man in the end zone, and it is incomplete. Rodney right on the far side, <coughs> covered by Antonio Giovanni for Garces. And he wanted that one back. In the air. He would love to have that one back. That was a perfect throw. He was wide open to the corner of the end zone. That ball should have been caught. And if you're riding right, if he was standing, he'd say, I should have caught that ball. That was great execution. That should have been a touchdown. Fortunately for Garces, it was not caught for a touchdown. It's third and four. But 5-0-4 to play in the second quarter as Garces tries to get the ball back. But they made a couple of mistakes on this uh, series for BHS to allow the drillers to get into a uh, position here for a field goal or for a touchdown. But, they but BHS, like a great team, will take advantage of those types of mistakes, whether they are mental or physical. They haven't missed a beat, no matter who's in their quarterback, have they? They've no. looked really efficient. Happening in there at QB with a full house back, so I think BHS moved early. An official flings out the flags, and it's most likely against the BHS drillers. Yankees are flying, babe. Well, they were, they are were flying. flying at once. We, we saw one of them move very quickly on that particular running play. Yeah, Vegas was in their short yardage down there running that full house backfield again, getting those two blockers out there in front of Dugas. And, you know, again, if they if they get him to turn the corner, they were on the short side of the field. I mean, it's, it's awfully tough to stop him. But Garces needs to stop right here. They, they cannot afford to allow BHS to get into the end zone right here. This is a crucial possession. You have to hold them at, at the minimum to a field goal attempt or a field goal. 7-0 BHS at 4.59 to play in the second quarter. The premiere of the high school football game of the week on Time Warner Cable, Channel 16. Mark Heffernan with Bobby Sharp. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Sharp without the E. Right, without the E. It's exciting. If, I don't know if you can hear down low, but you can see the cheerleaders down there when we pan around. The Garces cheerleaders got the house rocking. They got the music playing. The driller cheerleaders on the other side, they're getting ready to go. And it's just, a, and like we said before, this is a great way for our first game of the year. It's a great environment and two great teams. The clock is running at 4.30 to play in the second quarter. Third and nine for the drillers. Another flag comes flying. Might be a delay of game penalty against DHL. Kind of unusual. They were rolling very well, and they have uh, bring the full house back. They'll have the illegal motion, then a delay of game, which uh, shows a little confusion as to what to run. Most of what they've been running has been working reasonably well tonight. So they're at third and 14. Backed up a little bit. Having a QB from the 25. Looking for a great protection. Motoring out of the pocket to his left. Throws into the end zone. Wide open. Touchdown, VHS. Dave Bennett. I think we've got a flag down, Mark. We do have a flag. Illegal man downfield against the Drillers. Their third consecutive penalty. And that's the second time that's happened. When Rodney Wright was open earlier and Lewis overthrew him, Rodney Wright might have been the guy that was illegally downfield. But that time, I don't know if it was Bennett or not, but the athleticism of the BHS quarterbacks created that play. When you roll out of containment, those safeties and corners, they have to play you. That time they came up, Bennett drifted out, out of the flat area, into the end zone, he was wide open. But for not, and Garth is dodging another bullet. Well, BHS has thrown the ball exclusively more than I thought they would this evening. Garth has had some more pressure on the quarterback. 
well, I, back there a little bit too long. Well, I think they are. But whether I, they're uh, moving out of the pocket, you got to have somebody in their face when they're throwing the ball. Well, that's all about containment, and I'm sure that's one of the things they talked about. They must contain those quarterbacks getting outside, and I've, I'm impressed by the way Davis was throwing the ball. Now it's third and 19 for the Drillers at 4.22 to play in the second quarter. They're holding a 7-0 lead over Darcy. Man-to-man -man coverage on the far side. Another flag is down. And it's getting ugly for the Drillers. Oh, my. And the second consecutive play of team penalty against VHS. Well, they're trying to get Garfield back to the game, at least mentally and emotionally here in the latter stage of the second quarter. It's up to the Rams to take advantage of that. Yeah, they don't want to give up a big play right now because they've got VHS kind of discombobulated a little bit. This is really bizarre. I think that's about four in a row. Well, that's early in the season. You know, this is the first actual game for both teams. And, and you know, we, we kind of expected to see a little sloppy play. Third and 24 for the Drillers. Hammond looking to throw. Gets away from the left to the 30. 25. Shows his speed. 20. They make the tackle at about the 13-yard line. Big run for Hammond. As that speed to the outside by the BHS Drillers, the eluding tackles. Potential tacklers by the Garces Rams, and they pick up a big game. And that time, I thought the BHS offensive line did a nice job of forming the pocket, and all he did was just run with it. He saw the open, he saw the middle open up, he saw his receivers covered, and he just took off and ran with it. It was a great job. And again, Mohoffer made the big play, but you had BHS's strength again, short yardage. Now they're in a short yard situation, fourth and about two or three forty to play in the second quarter. They're seven nothing lead, so they're back in a good situation at the twelve yard line. Hammond to Bennett. Goes on the outside, cuts back. Great play, has a first down inside the 10. Garth had a chance to drop him for about a two-yard loss to cut back against the grain. He was about four rounds. And is that a great piece of running by Bennett? Running. That is a great piece of running because Tobias had him right there when he was going to turn the corner, and he stutter-stepped him and cut inside. Oh, what a great piece of running by Bennett. Drew Johns made the tackle for Garth playing defense on many of these plays tonight as Garth brings their goal line defense in. First and goal for BHS just inside the 10-yard line, I believe. Hammond to Bennett, off the left side, pulls his way to the five, maybe to the four-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, if, if Bakersville High scores on this drive, they're going to be really fortunate because they have hurt themselves and hurt themselves and hurt themselves, and Garces is even going to kick themselves even worse because they've had opportunities and haven't taken advantage of them. I mean, the third and 19, and then Lewis scrambles, and then uh, Hammond scrambles, and then boom, they have a fourth and one. Their ability to make a big play. Fourth and second penalty, and Garces is not taking advantage of it. Second and goal for BHS. Hammond to Bennett on the left side. He has a touchdown for the Drillers. Dave Bennett. Too many, opportunities. Too many opportunities, Mark, and you can't give Bakersville High that many opportunities because when you do, and again, they were hurting themselves, but Garces couldn't take advantage of it, and they just pound you, pound you, pound you, and when they're in their short yardage, kiss it goodbye, baby, they're going to score because that big offensive line does a great job. It does a wonderful job. And it's really moving that Garces defensive line around here in the first half. They've been controlling the ball for the two quarters. Garces has not had it too often here in the first half. 2.36 to play. The PAT is up and it is good. Eric Walker, the pitcher for BHS. 2.36 to play in the first half. BHS 14. Garns is nothing. And you are listening to the high school football game of the week. Watching the game of the week exclusively on Time Warner Cable Channel 16. Whether you need just one or 100, you'll always get a perfect copy at Time Warner Productions. Our video duplication department uses state-of-the-art equipment and provides pro-grade videotape at no extra charge. For $10.95, duplicate up to one hour from any of these consumer or professional formats. VHS, VHSC, SVHS, Beta, 8mm video, 3 quarter, 3 quarter SP, Pro Beta, Pro Beta SP, or Digital Beta Cam. For $15.95, duplicate up to two hours. From corporate video duplication to family videos, you'll always get the best copy at Time Warner Productions. Fourteen nothing in favor of BHS over Garces, but two thirty six to play in the first half. Bennett with a strong run for a touchdown. In fact, he had a couple of great back to back runs. BHS made the plays they had to on the last drive. They had four consecutive penalties. Garst had a personal foul. Garst had a chance to pick up a fumble by BHS. In fact, the Rams probably could have had the ball 
10 minutes ago, never never picked it up, didn't take advantage of some of the mistakes by BHS, and as you know, when you give the drillers many opportunities, they always come up with a big play. What I want to know is, Mark, is taking a break here, change the ball. Can you do the margarita? I mean, they're playing the song down there. I see the crowd doing it. I'm taking a break. Oh, they stop it. Dang it. Can you do it? See, my wife can do it, but she's got to teach oh, me how to do it. Great. <laughs> but Garst right now, uh, Bobby has the ball first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. They haven't had a ball that much tonight. BHS has uh, contained the clock, has used it effectively tonight. It's passed a little bit. They've kept the ball away from the Garst's ram. John's to throw it and overthrows it to Antonio Giovanni on the far side. And it'll be second and 10 for Garst. Yeah, they, they need to be careful down here that they don't make a mistake and give the ball right back to Bakersfield High School. What they want to do is get out of this half with, you know, no less than what they're looking at now, 14 nothing with 2.30 left in the first half. And they don't want to make any mistakes. They want to play smart because they still are in this game. They did have a good drive. Uh, I think they missed an assignment on the...